Welcome back to the channel everybody, my name is Caleb and in today's video we're going to be talking about Kujira. Kujira was a protocol built on Terra but as you know a couple months ago the whole ecosystem collapsed but the team at Kujira actually decided to move on to their own chain in the cosmos. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the apps that they have released right now. We're going to be going over some of the apps that they have coming in the future and I'm also going to be showing you how to bridge assets over onto Kujira. As always, there's going to be timestamps in the description for you to jump around to whatever part of the video you want. So without further ado, let's get started. Here I am on Kujira.app and it looks like Kujira is focused on creating applications that actually bring true value instead of relying on inflationary tokenomics. Kujira isn't just one application, they have a couple. They're going to be having their Orca application. Orca is going to be an app where you can bid on liquidated collateral. Orca was actually live on Terra, so if you want a sneak peek, I'll leave a video linked up in the top right. I did a video on Kujira, I think last year. But keep in mind that a lot of the info in that video is a little bit outdated, but if you want a sneak peek at what Orca is probably going to look like, you can still check it out. They have a DEX, a decentralized exchange called Fin. You can trade different assets on Fin. We're gonna be checking out Fin later in the video. They have an app called Beluga where you can bundle multiple transactions together. This hasn't been released yet, but it will be released soon. And then they have their Blue application. It's pretty much like a Kujira dashboard for the ecosystem. Kujira has their own token, the Kuji token. And because they're their own chain, there are multiple different validators on the Kujira chain, just like any other proof of stake chain. One thing that's really cool about Kujira is that if you stake Kuji with a validator, you delegate your tokens, you're actually going to earn a basket of Apex assets over time. So any fees that are generated on Kujira are actually paid to stakers through the validators. Like I mentioned before, Kujira is not going to rely on inflationary tokenomics. All of the staking rewards were actually fees that were generated across all of Kujira's applications. So that being said, we can move on to the Kujira Blue app. This is pretty much the dashboard for Kujira. Also, before we move on, I want to mention that Kujira is based on Cosmos. So you're going to need a Kepler wallet installed if you want to use Kujira. And we can see right now at the time of filming, one Kuji equals about 36 cents. It has a fully diluted value of about $44 million. And as of right now, there are about 10 million Kuji circulating. You can see a breakdown of the total supply of Kuji right here. That 10 million number refers to liquid Kuji that does not include staked Kuji. And there is about 50 million Kuji vesting. You can see the vesting release schedule down here. So at the end of 36 months, all of the Kuji should be released. So here's the staking APR 0.7%. Now that's pretty small right now, but remember, Kujira is relying on real yield generated by fees no inflation, right? There's a little wallet section right here. You can check out all of the assets that are in your wallet. You can swap tokens on this tab. You can bridge tokens. They have IBC transfers and there's also a cross chain bridge. More on that in a second. And over here on stake is where you stake your tokens. Now you can see that I have a small amount of Kuji staked and I'll actually be accruing different assets, not just more Kuji. I can get some Juno, some Osmo, some USDC. That's just based on what the fees are actually paid in. The blue app also has a governance section. There have been lots of different proposals already. A lot of them have to do with what assets are going to be listed on Fin. So once you stake some Kuji, you can go and vote on those. And then they also have a Terra token migration section. So this is if you had Kuji on the old Terra Classic network, you can actually migrate it over to the new Kujira network. Now, I'm not going to go over how to do that. The team has done a really good job of outlining all of the steps right on this page. You can also check out their Medium. They have an article on how to migrate the tokens over. So if you had Kuji before, before the whole crash and all that, you can probably migrate your tokens over. Team Kujira's links, their Twitter, their app, their Medium will all be linked below. So that's pretty much it for the Blue application. But what about Finn, their new DEX? Well, if you'd like to go to Finn, you can just go down to the bottom of any page on Kujira, whether that's their main page or any of their other applications, click on it, make sure to connect your wallet. And you can see that this looks pretty much like a centralized exchange page. Now it's not a centralized exchange. This is all on chain, so decentralized exchange. But Finn is a little bit different than most other DEXs. Most other DEXs that we've gone over, Astroport, TerraSwap, Uniswap, those are all based on liquidity pools pools of assets that have an algorithm that automatically balances them. 
people can trade in and out of the pool and the pool will balance itself. Fin, on the other hand, is based on people providing buy and sell orders for different assets. They call it an order book exchange. You can see the order book right here, all of the sell orders, all of the buy orders. And by the way, I am on the Kuji slash Axelar USDC pair. You can see all the recent trades right here, right? And you can toggle between just buy orders, just sell orders, whatever you want. And then going down here, if you wish, you can place an order, a limit order or a market order. You can see your open orders and your filled orders. If you've ever used a centralized exchange like KuCoin or Binance, this is very, very similar. This one is just on chain. Up here, you can choose what asset you want to trade. Like I was saying before, there were different governance proposals to approve different assets, different pairs. And we have all of these, Kuji USDC, Kuji Atom, Osmo USDC, Wrapped ETH USDC, and more. One thing to keep in mind is that there are two phases for listing assets on Fin. There's a bootstrapping phase and a full trading mode. The bootstrapping phase is for any new pairs and only limit orders are allowed to be placed during the bootstrapping phase. And once there is enough liquidity, full trading will go live. So market and limit orders are allowed. With Fin, there's not a liquidity pool of assets just waiting to be traded. It actually relies on people coming over to Fin, placing limit orders and trading assets that way. And if we go back to Fin, we can see that Kuji USDC was one of the first pairs. So it's gone through the bootstrapping phase. It's in full trading mode right now. But if there's ever a newer pair listed, it could be in the bootstrapping mode. I just checked them. None of them are in the bootstrapping mode right now. They're all available to be traded, but that's just how Fin works. Whenever there's a new pair listed that was voted in by governance, first there need to be orders ready before full trading can begin. Okay, so we went over blue, we went over Fin, but how do you actually get assets onto Kujira? I mentioned the migration before and you should check that out if you had Kuji tokens on Terra, but what if you didn't? I didn't have any, so I had to figure out how to get some assets on to Kujira. And there are actually lots of different ways to do it. If you want to get USDC, or more specifically the Axelar USDC onto Kujira, you can bridge it from Avalanche, Polygon, or Phantom. You can bridge native USDC from Ethereum, or you can deposit USDC directly from a centralized exchange onto Kujira. The way that I did it was actually traded assets on Osmosis and bridged the USDC over, and I'm gonna go over that in just a second, but that's just for USDC. Keep in mind, there are lots of other pairs on here that don't even involve USDC. There's Atom Osmo and Kuji Atom. So I mean, technically, you could just bridge Atom over via the IBC. You can go to IBC right here, select which chain you want to bridge from. It's Cosmos Hub. You can get Atom, and then you can just bridge it over to Kujira. Just enter in the amount and initiate the IBC transfer. And if you wanna do all the cross-chain stuff, you can do it right here. You can choose which chain to bridge from and then the amount of USDC that you want to bridge over. And there's actually a guide on how to do this. It's a pretty long guide. It's a guide to trading on Fin. I'm gonna have this linked in the description. And if you really wanna get in depth with bridging assets over, placing different kinds of orders and all that, then you should definitely check this out. It has all of the info on how to bridge USDC over. Like I was saying, the way that I did it though, was I just went from osmosis. So I had some assets on osmosis and I traded them to USDC. Make sure that it's the Axelar version. I'm not even sure if there is a different version on osmosis, but make sure it's Axelar. Then once you've traded your assets to Axelar USDC, you can go to assets right here, and then you can go to withdraw. Make sure that you go to your Kujira wallet and copy the address. I just had to connect the right wallet, but now I can click on withdraw. Now this is gonna take me to a page called Satellite. This is powered by Axelar. And we can see that I have USDC on Osmosis and I want to bridge it over to Kujira. So I can scroll down and just click on Kujira right there and then enter my destination address. This was the one that I just copied. Enter that in, initiate transfer. It's just gonna generate a one-time deposit address. Then once it gets to this step, just click on Kepler like that. You're gonna to have to enter the amount that you want to send. I'm gonna click on max and send it, and there is a one USDC fee. Since you're bridging over from Osmosis, you're gonna to have to pay a small fee in Osmo, click on approve. And now it's just going to send over the USDC to my Kujira address, and it could take a couple minutes. So again, if you have Axelar USDC on Osmosis and you want to bridge it over to Kujira, just click on withdraw, go to satellite, and then click on the Kujira chain. 
So that took about, I don't know, two minutes. And now we can see that the USDC has shown up in my Kujira wallet. Make sure that it's set on Kujira up here. And now we should be ready to swap it to Kuji, right? Well, not exactly. There is one more thing that we have to do. Kujira is its own chain, and usually you would pay for gas with the Kuji token, except we don't have any Kuji tokens. We only have USDC because I didn't have any Kuji tokens to migrate over. And if you're starting out migrating USDC over, you should only have that in your wallet. No Kuji tokens. I have a little bit because I was playing around with it before, but if you're just starting out and you didn't migrate any tokens, you probably won't have any Kuji in your wallet. There is a way to get around paying for gas with Kuji though, and it can be a little bit confusing if it's your first time doing it, but don't worry, we're gonna do it together. All of this is laid out in that trading guide under the section, connecting your wallet. Pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna go onto blue. Now you're gonna go up to this wallet section right here, and we can see that there's this little gas icon beside each asset that I have in my wallet. Pretend that this Kuji isn't here. So if I want to pay for gas using USDC instead of Kuji, all I have to do is click on the gas icon. And now it gets a little confusing. I actually have to disconnect my wallet. So in the Kepler extension, I just have to go to a random chain, then scroll down to where it says Kujira and click X. So that removes the Kuji extension from my Kepler wallet. Now I'm just gonna click refresh the page and the Kujira website is looking to add this chain to Kepler. So I'm gonna click on approve. We pretty much just have to re-add the chain. And now I should be able to pay for gas for all my transactions using USDC. And you can do this for other assets that are in your Kuji wallet. You will have to go through the process though. You're gonna have to click the icon, disconnect your wallet, and then re-add the chain. Now we are finally ready to place an order on Fin and buy some Kuji tokens. As of right now, I can either place a limit order or a market order. A market order will just buy or sell the assets that I'm trying to trade at the current market price. And with a limit order, I can actually specify the price that I want to buy or sell my assets at. Market orders are pretty simple. If I'm trying to buy Kuji, I can just go and enter in whatever amount of USDC that I want to spend. It'll show me the estimated amount of Kuji that I'll receive, the price at which I'll be getting that Kuji for, the fee, the slippage, etc. I can just click on buy Kuji, and then I just sign the transaction in my wallet. Also look at this, it's only 0.01 USDC to send a transaction on Kujira right now. So I can buy some Kuji like that, check out my wallet, and then see that I was able to buy the Kuji tokens. They showed up in my wallet. I can also place a limit order. I can select the price at which I want to buy Kuji at. Now I can enter it in manually, or I can go up here to the order book and click on one of these. I'm just gonna click on 0.377. Then I'll just do 75% of my USDC. Just like that, buy Kuji, sign the transaction. Now we can go over to filled orders and see that my order was filled. I was able to buy 53.7 Kuji for $20. I will have to go and claim that, sign another transaction. So that was pretty much withdrawing my Kuji. And yeah, it showed up in my wallet. Now that I have Kuji, I can go back to blue and I can decide to stake it with a validator. All of these are validators and you can check the view right here. You can just click on that little icon and it will show each different validator. You can click on one of these validators and more info will pop up about them. You can see their uptime, their bonded tokens, their contact info, and how many tokens they've collected from fees, from real fees generated on Kujira's applications. Shout out to KujiDAO, I've already delegated a bit to them. They're super helpful, super active with their community. They're always going over the different proposals, always sharing info about the Kujira chain. But one thing I do wanna say is that in the name of decentralization, it might be a good idea to choose a validator that doesn't have the highest voting power. I believe that KujiDAO is number two. So. I'm gonna to have to delegate my new Kuji tokens to a different validator. You can sort the validators by voting power right here. And then you can just go down and find one that you like. There's not really an exact science to this. Just keep in mind the commission that they charge. Most of them charge about 5%. And then just look for uptime. You wanna look for a validator with high uptime. You can check them out. You can check out their social media. Then if you wanna stake with one, just click on stake. Click on the amount that you wish to stake. I'll just do my max amount of Kuji. Keep in mind that there's a two week unstaking time and then you can just sign the transaction and stake with the validator. Pretty simple. Now I can see all of my staked Kuji. I can claim rewards when they show up, redelegate or unstake. If you've ever used a different proof of stake chain, this is, this is very similar. 
And that's pretty much it for what Kujira has released right now. They have their Blue application and their Fin application. Blue is a dashboard for the Kujira ecosystem. Fin is the order book decentralized exchange. There are lots of different pairs on Fin right now, and there are lots of different pairs being added soon. You can check them out in governance. At the time of filming, there is a proposal for the Evmos USDC pair. One thing I will say about stuff that Kujira has released right now is since they are their own chain, they also have a finder. You can find that at the bottom of any of their pages, any of their applications. This is just a blockchain explorer. You can enter in whatever address or transaction that you want, and then you can find out all the info about it. Kujira is in its very early stages right now, but it looks like they're going to have a promising future. As far as what's next for Kujira, they said that they want to launch a protocol on the Kujira chain. They're going to be enabling margin trading on Fin. It looks like they're developing their own wallet. And then it looks like Orca is going to go live. I believe that it's going to go live in the Polkadot ecosystem first. We'll be able to bid on liquidated collateral and get it for a discount. I know a lot of you remember the days of bidding on BLUNA and BETH whenever there was a market downturn. And eventually that will happen again. It just won't be BLUNA and BETH. It'll be different assets. It looks like the first protocol that is going to be building on the Kujira network is Local. Local was also a protocol that was being built on Terra. And their main focus is building a decentralized on and off ramp. You can find more about Local just on, on their Twitter. To end off the video today, I just want to bring to your attention that as of right now, most of the validators that are validating on Kujira are actually running at a loss. Terra Watcher tweeted this out that Donku R is a top validator on Kujira with about 3.5 million delegated Kuji. And given current numbers, current staking APRs, and commission rates, he's only making about $700 per year, which is not enough to cover validator costs. Donku addressed that in the replies, and you can check that out if you like, but Team Kujira also replied, and I think that this sums up what they're trying to do and what we can expect from Team Kujira. Yes, it's true that the validators are operating at a loss right now, but eventually as more applications go live, as Beluga and Orca go live, and as more people start using Kujira's applications, the staking APR should increase. They're trying to build a chain that will be sustainable long-term, rather than just constantly inflating tokens and printing tokens. Inflationary tokenomics work really well for short-term incentives, but long-term, I don't really know if it's the best. I'm really interested to see if this works out for Kujira. I have a hunch that it will. Their products are very, very useful. Also, it's important to keep in mind that a portion of revenue from each external protocol built on Kujira will also flow to Kuji stakers. So as more and more protocols actually get built on the chain, that staking APR should start to increase. All of this talk about fees, and I totally forgot to mention what the fees actually are. So on Fin, at least, if you want to know the fees, you have to log on to the app and then go to fee structure right here. So there's two fees, a maker and a taker fee. The maker fee is 0.075% and the taker fee is 0.15%. I believe that you pay the maker fee when your order doesn't get matched right away. The order doesn't get filled because you're technically providing liquidity to Fin. The taker fee is for all market orders. That is when your order gets filled immediately. And just to reiterate, 100% of all fees generated on Fin are paid to Kuji stakers. I personally think that Kujira is great. I like what they built so far on their own chain, and I used Orca in the past on Terra, and it worked really well. I'm really excited for that to be released in the future. I'm also looking forward to seeing what other protocols decide to build on Kujira. It's been about two months since Terra collapsed and Kujira already has their own chain up and running. So congrats to the team. It's very, very impressive. This isn't financial advice. You can, you can buy some Kuji tokens if you want, and you can just leave it alone if you want. I will probably be buying some more. I've already bought some. I've already staked some. This is definitely a project that I'm keeping my eyes on. If you like the video, just give it a like, give it a comment. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like videos like this, videos on cryptocurrency, videos on DeFi, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you never miss another video. Make sure to go follow Team Kujira on Twitter. And if you're interested, check out their apps. Now is the time to learn how to use all this stuff so that when opportunity presents itself, you'll be ready. But that's pretty much it for today. Hope you liked the video and I hope you have a great week. Bye now.